All right, guys, so very few exercises out there are anaerobic by their nature. In calisthenics, most of them are pretty much somewhere in the middle, and we classify them depending on the metabolic processes required to convert chemical energy into mechanical work, and depending on the types of muscle fibers they employ during exercising. Obviously, aerobic exercises will utilize mostly slow twitch fibers because they are performed with and in the presence of oxygen. Now, burpees are not anaerobic by nature, but because you are doing it repeatedly with rhythmicity, which is kind of the theory of physical exercise, and as the effort and intensity keep uh, increasing, and also because you recruit more muscle groups systematically at the same time, it gradually goes towards anaerobic training. So in a way, at the beginning of your training, a burpee is more aerobic. But because they consume a lot of energy, even if it is far from a submaximal strength exercise, it will still get very close to an anaerobic metabolism rather quickly. What I'm saying is not bro science, this is just pure physiology. Then, there are other aspects like how powerful and fast the muscles will contract with each repetition, depending on how perfect the execution is, how high you jump, whether you involve a push-up movement, and how much break you take between reps. I'll add that range of motion and speed of execution will produce faster and more powerful contractions every time you do burpees. Therefore, burpees can easily be conditioning training without adding any more exercises or forms of training whatsoever. In fact, I dare to say that you could train for VO2 max with burpees alone. Shortly, when doing burpees, the oxygen demand increases proportionally with intensity. This makes the muscles need more oxygen. Your heart rate keeps going up to drive blood with nutrients and oxygen. As the effort adds up, you gradually get close to your maximum level of oxygen consumption, right below the total anaerobic effort. This is the VO2 max training. And in VO2 max training, you still use oxygen because it is a submaximal type of effort trained with aerobic training, actually. This training method uses the whole organism's capacity to transport oxygen into the muscles that require it. And that's why you can train for VO2 max in intervals, or you should uh, train for VO2 max in intervals or sets of over 1-2 minutes of continuous effort and not by doing established rep intervals. What I'm saying that is best to do sets of 1, 2, 3, 4 minutes than sets of 5, 10, 20 reps. However, you should train your VO2 max capacity with progressive aerobic training, not jump directly into this type of training if you're not adapted or used to it. Because it's a difficult effort to sustain, it requires a lot of resources and time to adapt, I can say that in a way pull-ups are not the only ones that require sort of progression training. Burpees need progressive training as well, if you intend to train for conditioning like the VO2 max. So doing high reps or extending time intervals is what makes the difference. Moreover, through continuous exercise, you will start recruiting more and more muscle fibers eventually. And if you're interested in how volume training employs the fibers and how they can stimulate muscle hypertrophy, then I suggest you watch this video right here because you can connect it with this one. Also, if you're not on the channel, please subscribe. You can also follow me on Instagram or download my programs from the site. Now, getting back to the name of the video, the only time burpee is cardio. Well, the only way burpees stay aerobic is always when you train below your VO2 max effort or capacity. Somewhere between 120, 130 BPM. That's the only way to avoid fatigue and do a prolonged training session. Honestly, 3-4 sets of 10 burpees, even without the push-up, will get you to 140 BPM, which is cardio all day long. If you keep adding reps, sets, or even harder, doing a push-up movement too, jumping very high, doing in extended intervals of 3 minutes, which is a lot, trust me that you'll exceed the VO2 threshold as well. And that's never cardio training. In fact, you will die almost. But if you want to keep it as close to aerobic as possible, I recommend sets of 1-2 minutes, burpees with pauses of 1-2 minutes. 
And while you execute, keep a good form and great technique, but try to pause briefly after each rep. After all, you're doing it in time intervals now, not re-established uh, repetitions. It's the only way a beginner will be able to train burpees for more than, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Remember that the slow twitch fibers are created to sustain an effort for hours. You can do burpees fast and with short pauses for longer than 20, 30 minutes. You need a very good conditioning for that. It depends a lot on many individual factors, of course, but that means burpees will eventually employ the whole fibers. Train them very well, they will fatigue, and I am convinced this can actually stimulate muscle hypertrophy in the legs to a certain extent, just because of how theory works. So, to conclude, do hundreds of burpees. I am all about it, every day if you want. It can replace many forms of exercises very effectively, but it requires a bit of, a bit of knowledge if you want to make the best out of them. So this was it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video. Please subscribe if you're new. Check my training programs on the website. And I'll catch you in the next video. Salute.